And so today we're going to talk about helping adopted children with grief, the hand model of the emotional brain. Kids don't recognize that grief is powerful and it can feel really emotional. I created a video for kids to help them understand the hand model of the brain, which was invented and created by Dan Siegel, a well-known neuroscientist. And the hand model of the brain, all you need is either a finger puppet or you can draw. So on your thumb here, an animal, which represents your animal part. And I explained to kids that you draw your animal here and we're gonna put either a finger ring on here, you can get them at any party city store, uh, googly eyes, or you can use a Q-tip and put little black eyes on the Q-tip and wrap it around the finger. So what we're gonna learn today is the hand model of the brain. Now I did make a video, it is on my YouTube channel. If you wanna show your child the hand model of the brain, you don't have to necessarily teach them like I'm teaching you right now, but kids need psychoeducation. They need to know what's going on for them. What will perpetuate an even more hopeless, helpless, and powerless is not receiving the psychoeducation. I wish I received this psychoeducation when I was a kid because I was so emotional. I'd be like, what is happening to me? What is happening? Nobody could explain what was happening to me. Well, the hand model of the brain really helps kids make sense and understand, oh, I'm acting out from my animal part. So the way it works is, the child draws on their thumb, you put the finger ring up here. They hold up their hand, they fold in their finger part, and they bring down the top part like a blanket, comforting and nurturing their animal part like a blanket. And we say, hey, we're gonna look into our brains because this is about the size of our brain. And we're gonna open up our brains and see what's going on because this is going on for all of our brains. This happens to all of us. We wanna help kids understand this is not just about you. This is about all of us. And inside of our brain, when something is overwhelming, scary, makes us feel so many feelings, we're going to do one of three things to protect ourselves because our brains don't like to not feel good. So one thing that our animal part will do, if you think of an animal, when he gets he or she gets scared or stressed out, what will they do? How will they behave? Will they run? Will they fight? Or will they do nothing and freeze? Well, we ask the child, what do you think your animal does when he or she becomes overwhelmed, feeling helpless, hopeless, and powerless? Well, she pushes away whatever it is that's making her or him feel powerless. Or they run away. Or they just don't know what to do and they just freeze. This happens to all of us. So we all have an animal part that will fight flight or freeze. However, we are human beings with a higher part of our brain. We're not animals. We are humans and we can name it to tame it. We can talk and say what we're feeling and what we need. So we want to teach kids how to cope. So when you start feeling like you're about to flip your lid and act out from your animal part, you can think for a minute and go, hold on a second. I'm about to, I'm feeling really mad or really sad or really scared or really happy. And I'm about to flip my lid and act out for my animal part. But I need to be able to provide myself with a need to help comfort, soothe, take care of my animal part so that I don't act out like an animal. And so there are five A's that I teach kids. And they're not gonna be able to do all of these. They can pick one or two that work for them. When I feel sad and I'm crying, I need alone time. And that's one of the love languages. I need to be alone. I need affection, I need comfort. I need soothing. I need a hug. I need my mom or dad to just hold me and let me cry. Just to feel held. 
I need attention. I just need to be heard. I need to say, 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 and tell, tell, tell all that I'm speaking and feeling through words. Or I need appreciation. I need to know what I do well at because when I feel so sad, I feel rejected. I feel like it's all my fault that I'm not with my birth family. I need appreciation. Or I need acknowledgement that I exist, that you matter no matter what, that these feelings are valid, you're valid, and yes, you're having a normal reaction to an overwhelming experience. Of course, you're crying. And that's what I needed my mother to say. Of course, you're so sad. You have so much to feel sad about. So that acknowledgement is really important. But helping kids understand, hey, these feelings are going to rise up in our bodies. And we're going to go, sometimes we are going to flip our lids and act out from our animal part, but we're going to learn how to have impulse control and go, hold on, hold on. I'm about to feel that. And I need, I'm going to call my mom because I know that when she's with me, I can feel better. And when I feel better, I can do better. So that's teaching kids coping skills. This is another intervention that I do. It also includes poster board, it's helping kids understand that there's parts of you. This experience is, yes, it's profound and it can feel a big part, the grief, the losses. However, when we give attention to our parts, they will shrink in intensity, frequency, and duration. They won't last as long. They won't happen as much. And we have many different parts to us. My angry part, my scared part, my sad part the part of me that doesn't like me part, my shame part. So it's providing the space and place, again, to help them externalize, make sense, and have someone with them because what's shareable becomes more bearable. Kids grieve and they need their parent with them to help them through it. You can use envelopes or you can use sticky notes. So you have a body drawn out. A silhouette, have them color in. Some kids even put a picture of their face on the face part. So you name each part. You can write on the sticky note and put it on the body. And for each part, they can identify three to five parts. And in the envelope or underneath the sticky note, they can write what that feeling part says, what that feeling part feels, and what that feeling part needs. And then they can understand how can one part support another part, that actually all of these parts are here to help and serve and work with each other, because that's part of being human. We all have these parts, and we all learn how to organize them, accept each of them, honor them, know them, and befriend them. And that's what the Parts of the Intervention is about. And managing anger is a big part of grief because typically children do not know how to grieve and most kids will act it out with aggression and aggression leads to anger and projecting it out because anger is a secondary emotion. It's the easiest emotion to have, but there's always something driving anger and yes, grief and loss is what drives anger. And so if we can honor, and when I say the hand model of the brain, name it to tame it, I feel and I need. When a child is able to go, wait a second, wow, okay, when I get angry, wow, what am I really feeling? I really feel sad. I really feel afraid. I really feel shame. That the child, again, can name it to tame it. So helping them identify, and this is on Google if you look up the anger wheel and you can print it out at home. And then there's the anger bag. And this is something that I developed for kids. And it's a coping skill bag. You get a bag that's durable. And in the bag, I like to say choose three that you think your child would benefit from. You can choose all of them or you can choose three. And each item goes into the bag and serves as a coping skill. We recognize that yes, we have anger and our anger part needs some skills because it know, needs to know how to manage this part 
so that we're not acting it out on other people or acting it out on ourselves. So Play-Doh, the Play-Doh is they squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, paper to rip, they're ripping up paper, releasing it, and this is something where the parent is involved, is there, they're releasing their feelings. Bubbles, they blow in their anger into the bubbles and watch it release, drawing their thoughts and feelings on paper. Bubble wrap is a really great way to release that aggression. And index cards where they can write things they can do with their anger. And then all of those things go into the bag, three of them. And we can write on the bag things to do when I am mad to help my broken heart feel glad or whatever they choose to write on their anger bag. But this signifies, this is my anger bag. We can't always utilize these skills when we're angry. So guess what? You're gonna use them when you're not angry because we know this part of you exists. So we're going to give attention to your anger when you're not angry, because we're also gonna teach and train your brain how to respond and how to cope with your anger so we can get to what's really going on underneath, which is the sadness. And that's another intervention that I've done is the sad bag. Same concept as the anger bag, a bag that's durable, the Play-Doh, the bubbles, paper to draw, crayons, a pillowcase, which serves as a container. You get a pillowcase that you're willing to surrender, to be drawn on, with permanent markers. And I always say, please put paper between the top and the bottom of the pillowcase because the marker will bleed through. And one side of the pillow is the sadness. The other part of the pillow is the reliefness, the happiness, and the child draws their sad sadness. It could be their tear pillow, their scream pillow. And then the worry dolls, Every night before you go to bed, you tell each worry doll a worry about your sadness, about a feeling, about a thought, and then you put it in the bag and then you put them under your pillowcase and you go to sleep and now you have a place to put all your worries. Some kids like this, some kids don't. Any of these interventions, you need to use your best judgment as a parent. Is this going to work for my child or not? Or maybe one or two things will. Then the index cards, writing down things on the card that work for the sadness, going and asking my mom for a hug, and then all the items go in there, and then this is placed somewhere only to be used to deal and cope with that sad part.